This week on Israel Update. Maybe we've got blinkers on. Maybe we're not seeing the blessing of God that's right in front of us because we're so consumed with other things. We should really, and definitely through the Israel Channel, we should bring us, we should bring Christians back into this Jewish values and, and Jewish type of celebrations because that's what Jesus did. Thank you for your loyal and continued support of Israel by partnering with the House of Destiny, Israel Partnership. It is because of people like you that we are able to work together to better the lives of Israel's citizens. Your partnership is vital as it supports so many wonderful and necessary missions in our beloved nation of Israel and is so appreciated by all her precious people. Welcome to Israel Update. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for giving your time to watch this. It really does mean a lot. And we pray that today you would be blessed. Today, I am very, very happy to be with Doobie Sabo again. And we are gonna be speaking to you about this incredible time of year for the Jewish people, which is Rosh Hashanah, which just happened. And Doobies, why don't we talk about that a little bit? What it means, what it is, why it's important. Well, first of all, you know that um, everything should have a beginning and an end. And usually in the Jewish traditions, we don't believe in the end. We believe that when the end will come, this will be a new start and a new beginning. So every year, it's just one circle. And it's a circle that starts somewhere because we want to make something very unique and very special when the year starts for us. But we want to make sure that this is a, a continuous worship, a continuous relationship between us and God. And the very important thing about Rosh Hashanah is literally when you read the Bible, it's not the first month of the year. Yeah. It's actually the first on the seventh months of the year. Yeah. And that's to show you that we can, God can start anywhere with anyone, that's anytime. Awesome. But the important thing is that we have to declare it and we have to acknowledge it. So Rosh Hashanah, it's not only just a a day of the beginning of the year. It's also what we call Yom Truah. You make a sound of joy that here we are, we made it one year, and we're gonna go into the next year, and God willing, into the next year. And that's why we put aside the time and our efforts, and we get together as one earthly family to celebrate the life of each and every one of us and the presence of God in our lives. That's amazing and um, I'm sure I've said it before, but there's something that I just love so much about the feeling you get when you're in Israel and that is the way people celebrate life, the way people celebrate what would be considered simple, basic. Um, I remember the one time we were there, I think it was the last time Sid and I were there and uh, we were in a, a little like bookstore when we were about to go down to the, towards the Kotel and there's like a Temple Institute uh, bookstore. Oh, yeah. And we went there and there was a man in there who was selling books and he was just so happy and so content and it actually struck me um, just how contented he was. And I kind of asked him, I said, hey, are you having like a really good day? And he said, what more could I ask for in life? You know, I'm here in, in my homeland. I'm working, I've got food, I'm providing for my children, God is good. And there was something so beautiful in that, something so simple and basic, but I think it's something that so many of us take for granted, is just, you know, God's said so many times throughout Scripture, when you look at through, through the, the story of the Old Testament, you know, God would say to the people constantly, the people of Israel, remember, remember me. Remember what happens, what, what was happening when you come into the place that I've promised you, remember. And I think that's why um, it's always so significant when there is a Jewish celebration, it's a remembering what God has done. It's a celebrating of what God has done. It's not, uh, it's not just this random thing that kind of happens. You know, in, in regular culture, I guess, you know, non-Jewish culture, generally with New Year's, people go crazy and then they, they feel terrible. You actually start the year feeling terrible and then they make all these resolutions and the gym is full for the first week of January and then, you know, it's totally empty by the third. But the, what you're saying about the way that the Jews kind of see this and, and view it is that it's an awareness that God has brought around another year of life. 
Yes. God has brought around another year of goodness. God yes. has brought it around and there's an acknowledgement that it's God that's done it. Exactly. That's the word that I was looking for and I loved it when they said the acknowledgement because with this acknowledgement of God's presence in your life and here you are entering another life, another, sorry, another year and, and we pray for another blessed year and there's also a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense that yes, I walked hand with hand with God who brought me to this end of the year and the beginning of new year. And it's exactly what you do when you have an anniversary or something like this. That's always, you have birthday wishes to people and you say, may all your wishes come to pass and always, this is like, even if your wishes didn't come to pass this year, there's still a chance that they'll come to pass next year and the next year. As long as you walk with God and you acknowledge His presence in your life and as a collective spirit of your congregation, it's, it's the most beautiful holiday that we get together, men, women, children, all together, everybody, and we celebrate the presence of God in our lives all the year that passed and for all the years that will come. And that's, again, there's that word that there's a celebration. And when you read, you know, when you read through the Psalms, so often you'll, you hear this tone coming out of the Davidic Psalms specifically. Sometimes it's intense sadness, but there's so often this tone of incredible celebration. And it's, a, it's, it's celebrating things that maybe we take for granted. It's, it's celebrating the fact that rain fell on the land. Yes. And there's, you know, one of the, the, the Psalms says that you make the, the rain fall on the righteous and the wicked alike. It's what you do, it's because you are good. And there's just such an awareness within the nation of Israel, which again is supposed to be an example to us. The nation of Israel is a typology. There, 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 there's, a, there's something in the way that God orchestrated this nation, which was originally theocratic in nature. He wanted to be the, 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 the leader. He wanted to be the, the one that everybody looked to. And of course we know what happened with the, the people saying to Samuel, give us a king. And then all of these different things happened. But the initial and original intent of God with the Jewish people with the nation of Israel was for it to be a theocracy, for there to be this collective awareness that God is the one who does all of this for us. And you know, the beautiful thing about these celebrations and these holidays, it's not that he has just, you know, philosophical point of view of theology or theocracy or, or something, because sometimes, you know, I'm not so fond of religion. Yes. You know, it's like sometimes it's just a way for some people who are smart enough to control the mob <laughs> by intimidation or something like this. But I'm, I'm madly in love with the cultural aspects, the traditions and the commandments of God. And, and the main commandment for the Jewish holidays is Vehigadta Lebimcha. It has a value of education, true symbolism. You want to you wanna educate your child or something like this, so you find an example or something that symbolizes what you need to remember. You say, when you see that, you know that this is happening. When you see the, uh, the trees are blooming like this, this is, this is spring coming. So with Rosh Hashanah, it's so amazing because there is like a plate on your table with all different kind of symbolic foods. And, 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 and this is the beauty of it, to sit down together as a family to show what this symbolizes in the life of a Jew in the eyes of God, like the pomegranate with, with multiplication and blessings and the head of the fish, that you'll be a leader and not a tail. And the, and the apple with the honey that we just celebrated and everything is, may you have a sweet year. And you know, when you teach a young kid in, in, in Cheder, uh, when they are three years old, two years old, I know your child, two years old, she could mm -hmm. read, a year old, she could read, thank God. But, but we, at three years old, we take the child to the Cheder and what we do literally, we put the letters and we, we mark them with honey. And, and we make it sweet for the child to be able to read the Torah and the Bible. And they taste it. And it, So all this symbolism, it's so important because that's what you remember and that's what you say. And that's what you give to your child and your children's children. And this circle of life is all about the presence of God. It's the promise of God for our lives. That's amazing. Um, I love that. And just, you know, we all know that's the way children learn. Um, it's, you know, 
children learn differently, of course, but it's, you know, they're interacting and they're getting to taste it. And there's a scripture in the Bible too that says, taste and see that the Lord is That's good. That's right. And so it's, there's That's a- That's right. And it's beginning from Rosh Hashanah. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Kim had an amazing song. He did. He had oh, a beautiful yeah. song, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Um, I'm, I sound like an old man when I sing, so I'm not gonna sing it for you, <laughs> but it, it's out there. Uh, a really beautiful song of His. And that really is something I think that God wants for us. Like, you know, He's the one who made the earth. He's the one who yes. made all these things. And then I can only imagine the joy it will, it must bring him seeing his people enjoying what he's given them and acknowledging him as the gift giver, acknowledging him as the one who has given it to them. And I don't know if I totally understood this until I became a parent, but the joy of giving a gift has multiplied for me in a way that I cannot even begin to explain. Just being able to give my little girl something that I know she really loves or wants, it fills my heart with such joy. Like, hey, you know, I got to give this to her and I can I can only imagine what it must be like for God looking at us as his children as his children um, you know going wow you know they're enjoying what I've given them they're enjoying what I've made and again another thing that we can take out of kind of just the Jewish culture and even the fact that it's alive today that it's happening today that in homes all around Israel and Jewish homes all over the world in this past week as Rosh Hashanah came by and and you know and there was this great celebration about it we look at the symbolism and again we we look at it and it's we can glean something for our own lives that maybe we've got blinkers on. Maybe we're not seeing the blessing of God that's right in front of us because we're so consumed with other things. And so often it's a matter of perspective. I love how the Jewish people do it, that it's a physical plate and on it are these different things and, and they'll talk about it and go, hey, this is what it means. And then the children are, are being taught and it's just this constant awareness, awareness, awareness of God. And it's something that I wanna learn from and that I wanna you know, kind of do better and it's just going, hey, let me just be aware looking around at what it is that God's given me. You know that um, sometimes we say uh, the way the Jewish people celebrate and, and I think that we should really, and definitely through the Israel Channel, we should bring us, we should bring Christians back into this Jewish values and, and Jewish type of celebrations because that's what Jesus did. Yes. I mean, people speak about the Last Supper, but I'm thinking about all the many other suppers that he had before with his disciples, with his family, maybe sitting on the table of Joseph and learning just like another Jewish kid, what is the celebration? What is Rosh Hashanah? I mean, he was 12 years old. He had so much knowledge already when he was in the temple. He was fascinating the people by the way he could teach them. Yes. All this knowledge didn't come just Maybe he came straight, I don't know, carved into him from the father. But I think that it has also a lot to do with the way that he's brought up, just like another Jewish kid sitting down at the table, celebrating year after year, the acknowledgement of the presence of God yes. and becoming a shepherd for so many other people. And I think that going back to this type of celebrations, this type of learnings, I mean, a wonderful thing that I see here in America is the Thanksgiving. When people come from all of yeah. it, we have so many celebrations of Thanksgiving through the Jewish calendar, which is always what you said, the acknowledgement and the bringing thanks to the Lord God of Israel that you are the creator, you brought us here, you gave us all this and it's all here in front of you and we thank you for that. And, and I think this is something, this type of, going back to this type of celebrations that we can share together. I'm always trying in my house to try and bring some Christian friends to our Jewish celebrations so they can be part of it uh, and, and feel the same sense that I'm sure that Jesus had when he had these celebrations, either with his disciples and his flock or with his teachers and his father and family. And I can attest to that because I've been part of some of those celebrations and they've been absolutely wonderful. And the Bible says again in, in Proverbs and again repeated in Ephesians about how when we train up a child in the way he should go when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I know for a lot of people, it's been difficult watching children of yours grow up and maybe stray from the way that you raised them. But I just really am trusting God that He's gonna do something incredible in bringing your children back. 
in bringing them back. There's a beautiful scripture in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, 22, and it says, return to me, faithless people. I will cure you of your backsliding, which speaks about backsliding being like a disease that God is able to cure. And, and the Bible tells us that Jesus is the great physician and He's able to do that. And I pray that that blesses whoever it is that that was meant for today. I know it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with, with Rosh Hashanah, but sometimes we can be despondent during a time of celebration because somebody we love isn't part of it or doesn't have the faith that we want them to have. But let me just encourage you to, as you keep remembering God, as you keep praying for them, as you keep yourself close to God, He is gonna move on your behalf, I know He is. And you know that Rosh Hashanah, this is like where you do the prayers of Rosh Hashanah. You don't only pray for those who are attending the table, those who are with you. And the first prayer is what you just said about is praying for the prodigals and praying for the lost souls and praying for the people that are not even able to attend. And in Israel, we have so many kids that has to be on the borderlines of Israel because yes. we need to be protected as you all of you probably remember the the, the, the terrible Yom Kippur War uh, that struck Israel on this day of celebration, 1973. So since then, we're not releasing the army. We, we always make sure, because the enemies are always trying to strike us when it's our times of celebration. They think that we are not, that we are mindless and we are so deep into uh, blessing our wine and something like this, but our soldiers, the people that are missing at the table at this very time, they are the first people to, brought, to be brought forth to the table. That's awesome. And again, such a, uh, just a showing that the heart of God is always for those that aren't at the table yet. Yes. Luke 19, 10 said that the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. And we spoke about that in a previous show, but um, that's all we've got time for today. And uh, make sure that you tune in next week again. There's a lot of important things happening. Coming up, we're gonna be speaking about Yom Kippur and why it's important and what we can take from it and what we can learn from it. So we're just, again, so grateful for your support, thankful for your support of Israel. Thank you for standing up for her. Thank you for being a voice. Uh, sometimes it might feel like crying in the wilderness, but we know that you are part of the remnant with us that are supporting Israel, that are trusting God, that um, His Spirit is gonna be poured out on all flesh in these days as things come to an end. So thank you again. We love you, we appreciate you. And every Friday, you can tune into israelupdate.org for a new show. God bless you. Israel Update is brought to you by the generous supporters of the Israel Partnership. Because of their love for Israel, we are able to bring you this show and continue to sow into the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. For more information on how to become a sustaining partner, please click the Israel Partner banner below.